The views on this program do not reflect those of ONTV or its board of directors. Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Terramina. Welcome to OAA Now here. I'm Sammy Terramina, a blogger of the Dragons Insider, blogger of Inside the OAA, one of the hosts between Terramina's on Oregon Neighborhood Television. I'd like to welcome our friends watching us and hearing us on the local voice on SoundCloud and also those watching us on Oregon Neighborhood Television. Got in here this week here. I'm back. A rainy Monday, dude. It is raining. I don't know why. It's the final <laughs> week of the season. Um, yeah, last lot of, wrapping up. A lot of a lot of graduations have occurred. Um, I know um, Bloomby Hills North Farmington graduated this Sunday. Yep. Um, Oxford. But, Oxford's already graduated. Clarkson's already graduated. Mm-hmm. I mean, like a lot of lot. I mean, like a lot of a lot of accomplishments for this 2018-2019 um, OA season. Um, and we could very well have two. We just had another state champion crown. We could have two state champions crowned yep. at the end of the week. Um, so let's get to that state champion that was crowned first. Um, and that was the Lake Orion boys golf team. I think it deserves one of these, don't you? That it does. The Lake Orion boys golf team, um, went to, fr- the, um, went to Frankenmuth this weekend. Of course, Frankenmuth well known for their, um, famous chicken dinners, the mighty <laughs> Cats river, um, <laughs> And of course, um, the dra- and the Dragons ended up winning the state title by shooting a ridiculous six oh six score, eleven strokes better than Gross Point South, and a runaway, and a runaway. And basically, the difference was Friday. Yes, when you look at Friday being a difference, um, it was just perfect if you were a Lake Orion fan. Just Ab- perfect. Absolutely. Uh, team wise, they shot a what a two ninety four on day one. That's insane. And took an a uh, ten shot lead, eleven shot lead into They're was up it ten, 10 shot? on nobody at Troy Catholic Central. Ten at the uh, ten shot lead after day one. A lot of it's got a a lot of it. I think Monty Gallagher, the Dragons coach, said this perfectly. He's he, it was so perfect that the team ended up going back home to Lake Orion on that yeah. Friday night. Um, of course, that Friday night was Lake Orion's prom night, and yeah. and um. That it and was. then and then they went back up to Frankenmuth the next day. And do you think that psychological effect kind of helped help them out? That's a good question. Um, sleep it could go two ways, right? You hear the hey, sleep in your own bed, familiar surroundings. You can fall asleep easier. You get your rest. You get a home cooked meal, right? And what's the other side of the, the distractions of home? People bugging you and all. This, you know, there's other distractions. That staying sort of in a thing. hotel. Yeah. So if you're staying on the road, you're in a hotel, unfamiliar bed. You know, so there was some question about, uh, you know, on the track side of things, should have should teams go the day before? Should they stay home and drive up? You know, that sort of thing. And we've we heard some parents ask that sort of thing. I don't know what the answer is, but whatever they did, it didn't really matter because they. Shot lights out on Friday, so sleeping in whatever bed didn't really matter. They hung on, and I shouldn't say hung on, but they won by 11. So then it comes to my next question. Yeah. Justin Soy of Lake Ori. Yeah, junior. Only a junior. What he did, this is a, a kid that comes into Lake Orion. Home, he was homeschooled. Yeah. And then he enrolled at Lake Orion. Local kid. Local kid. And for him to basically win the individual title mm-hmm. in a two-zero playoff with Growth Point South, um, with Growth Point South, uh, Cor- uh, Coulter, Coulter, yeah, Coulter Smith, Coulter Smith. <laughs> I had to make yep. sure I said that right. Yep. <laughs> um, what does that say about Soy's impact to this Dragon Golf team? Because you already had a guy in Drew Ke- and Drew Cobble, yes, and who I was wa- been there, and I want to talk about him. Because, but but yes, uh, we'll get to Drew. But with uh, Soy, the it's kind of like a, a present just kind of drops in your lap. You know, the coach Monty over at Lake Orion High School. Um, I, I, obviously, he's known. We've we've heard stories about Justin. People around town know who he is. He's a very good golfer. He's on the radar of everybody. And um, and the rules are that if you live in the boundaries, if you're homeschooled, you can participate in the sports of your local high school. Mm-hmm. And we've seen other people do it, uh, some soccer players, some volleyball players, that sort of thing. 
And it just happened to work out great that you got somebody who can shoot lights out, and he came out as a junior and uh, won the individual title. And scoring-wise, on day one, he shot a 71. Day two, talk about consistency, he shot a 70 for a 141 two-day total. And that's the exact number that uh, Coulter Smith <laughs> shot from and day one to day two. two. It was amazing. I mean, what a, what a battle between those two uh, athletes. Um, so now when you look at, of course, how the team title is done. Yeah. It's basically. Total shots, right? Yeah, I think. Yeah, it's total shots. So the difference was day one, as we mentioned. Absolutely. It was, that's, that was when the team title was decided. Yes. Now. And I have some numbers here to, to share that. I mean, one thing about golf is you can't deny the numbers. I mean, it is all numbers based, right? Mm -hmm. You shoot what you shoot. That's your score. That's it. The referees don't get involved. You take your score, unless you did something weird, you know, and you get disqualified or you get a penalty, right? We ain't but, going to, we I know. Ain't going to last year. <laughs> We're not. But it is what it is, right? It's cut and dry. It's black and white for the most mm -hmm. part. And on the Dragons' first day, they shot a 294. That's insane. Which is an amazing feat. That's six over par. Yes, and you said it was a uh, uh, sixty-five. I think was yeah. par there. A uh, par was yep. Yeah, par was six. I think par was sixty-five. 65? Okay, so uh, Gross Point South, the defending state title holder, right, the state mm -hmm. champ from a year ago, they shot a three seventeen. Rockford shot a three oh eight. Detroit CC, three oh four. So all these teams were within a hunt, but still over ten shots back. But here was here's one thing that really surprised me. We look at Clarkston, the uh, number one. They were number one ranked team in the state. They won the um. They won their regional. Um, same thing with Lake Orion. They won their regional, mm. but Clarkston was number one in the state all year. All year. And then Lake Orion got them in the Oakland County. That that and... was that kind of set up the momentum. Dragons mm -hmm. believed after that, don't you think? Mm -hmm. I mean, that was the floodgates that opened up. It kind of did. And then you look at Boomby Hills. Boomby Hills took eight. So. You know, well, not Clarkson, a bad day for the OA. Clarkson shot 310 on day one. That really did them in. Three, oh, yeah. It was over. And then 316. So they didn't improve upon the next day. You know, it's... Uh, so it had to be a disappointing day for Clarkson. Yeah. It had to be. And then Bloomby Hills, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. They they got back. They got into the state final. They, they finished eighth in the state. Yep. It's not bad for them. Their top uh, shooter was uh, Alex Gold mm -hmm. with a 157. But I want to get back to uh, Drew Coble for Lake Orion. Been on the team, known commodity. He's a senior, correct? Right. He shot better than the state champion on day one. He shot a 70. Those two combined, if you think about it, just steamrolled the competition. Between those two guys. And not only that, we'll go down to Andrew Remmer. Uh, he was third on the team in shooting. He shot a 76. So you got three in the 70s. That's huge. And it's humongous. I mean, so it's not just one guy carried the team, right? And not only that, you get down to the fourth shooter. One, two, three, yeah. Zach Hay, 77. So talk about a team dialed in. That team they were dialed was, in that day. They were dialed in. And then Andre, uh, on. Andres uh, Navarro had an 84 for day one. All right? So when you're looking at it, you go, a coach will take that all day long. Yeah. I mean, that is amazing what they did. And then day two, they were basically playing with house money because they had that lead. A complete house money. And then uh, Sui did his thing. He shot a 70. Colbo was a 75. Remmer was an 83. And Hay, 84. Navarro, 89. So they basically got away with house money. Completely. Yeah. So... Great job for those guys. But th talk about a team effort and having two guys shoot almost the top top, well, that's the same, you <laughs> top know, scores. That, that's the same thing I mentioned here when you look at the top in the top five. You have two dragons there. You have two blue devils there. Blue devils are growth points out there. Um, yeah. You know, and the fact that day one being the difference, the team title was huge. Yeah. That was the difference. And Lake Orion's Coble being the leader in the clubhouse for the individual title after day one, crazy. That says a lot. Right. I mean, you knew they were confident and going into day two. And then, of course, he had Soy right behind him. Mm -hmm. Right behind him. 
You heck, gotta wonder how heck, practices were. You know what I mean for this group. You gotta heck wonder. Heck of a tandem there. It's uh, wow. You gotta wonder. Yeah, but congratulations. That was. I don't know if anybody saw that on the radar coming. Uh, I'll be honest with you. I when I read the MHA preview. Yeah. On the um, boys golf for Division One. Um. Nobody said, said Lake Orton would win it. Yeah. They had Clarkston being the favorite. They had Rockford mentioned. They had nobody Detroit Catholic Central mentioned. Heartland the, the, mentioned. Defending champ is no slouch. No, yeah, Growth Point South was mentioned. Yeah. They were fa- I mean, they were one of the favorites coming in. I mean, nobody thought seeing that Lake Orion no. would do this. I mean, that, that, when we heard on Friday night, I mean, obviously it ripples. Lake Orion is in the big town, right? Mm-hmm. And you got uh, everybody's kind of dialed in of what everybody's doing, especially mm-hmm. in postseason. You see Twitter lighting up, things popping out there. And, you know, my wife doesn't play golf. She, we watch it. You know, we watch the pro stuff. I mm-hmm. like it more than she does. She was tuned in to Lake Orion Golf on Friday night going, they're leading in the clubhouse. Yeah, I was looking it at was it. Fantastic. I was looking at it on Friday. I'm saying to myself, wow. Oh, boy. Yeah, this could be something. By that margin. And then I was looking at, okay, last week I was thinking, you know, Clarkson would win this. You know what I mean? Clarkson could. You know, you got growth points out. Yeah. Nobody thought this team would do this. Nobody. And now for Lake Orion High School, this is their third state championship. In, in 2018, in 2018 2019. 2019. Yeah. We know about volleyball. Yes, fantastic. But a lot of people don't know that powerlifting won a state title. Correct. Um, and then now you bring in, now you have boys golf. So what does that say for... If you're Lake Orion Athletic Director Chris Bell. Oh, he's smiling. And <laughs> to see, to look at that state title trophy case, three state titles. Yeah. In I mean, one year. That I mean, says a lot. I mean, if we're going back looking at state titles, what was the last one before volleyball? Last one was, was hmm. it football? No. No, no, track? Boys track, I remember 2012. 2012, boys track won it in 2012. Mm-hmm. I, I, unless they had a uh, another powerlifting throw in there for good measure. Yeah, I, I guess so. Um, I, I, it's, it, if it's that hard, you know this is a rare thing. It is really rare. Right? And for you to be stumped on when was the last one, and you have everything locked in that brain of yours of what's <laughs> happening here in Lake Orion, correct? Yeah. It's, yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what's going on. It, it tells you how... How rare it is, and to to tag three in one year. It's hard. Unbelievable. It's hard. Unbelievable. You know, it's hard. I mean, you gotta have some. You gotta have talent, obviously, but you gotta have some luck out of nowhere. You do. You, you do. gotta have some luck. Yep. And yeah. I like to get. I like to thank, congratulate, also the rest of our state champions this year. Yes. Um, we have Lake Orion volleyball, Harrison boys bowling, Farmington gymnastics. Yes. Stony Creek cheerleading. Oak Park girls track and field. In an amazing win. Lake Orion boys powerlifting. Yep. Clarkson girls cross country. That was, I know we're, it, it's almost like a season in review, Sam. Yep. Lake or, Blue Fantastic. Hill, Blue Hills boys tennis. Yes. And now you have Lake Orion boys golf. And here's the thing. <laughs> the OA might not be done adding to its trophy case this, this school year because there, there could be two more state titles in rain. Um, You want to take a break or do you want to talk? Let's um, talk, man. Let's talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do this. This is too much fun. I mean, this is such good information. I mean, it, it's, it's almost like a party. It's like celebrating all these guys and girls of what they've done, these athletes. The, and, and think of the parents also, and the coaches, all the time they put in and rec- all this success. I also want to recognize the teams that were in the um, – either in the, in the Final Four or in the Hunt. Yes. Um, Clarkson Football State ch- state Finalist. Yes. Um, South a and Girls Basketball State Finalist. Um, Oxford Boys Bowling State Finalist. Yep. Lost to Harrison. Um, Lake Orion Boys Lacrosse. Oh, Heartbreaking loss to CC. Great year for them um, in the state semifinal. Great year for that yeah. team. You know, um, talk about a gutty performance over the last couple of weeks. I mean, mm-hmm. just they had a solid season, just missed it. Just Heartbreaking missed it. loss. Yeah. So those are the teams I want to recognize as well before we talk about the top, before we talk about them. Um, girls soccer and softball. Um, let's go to girls soccer yeah. first. Um. 
of course. Interesting matches coming up. They're there, down so. the final four. You got them. Um, Grand Rapids Forest Hills taking on Novi. Um, that'll be taking place, I believe, at Lansing Catholic. I'd love to see that game. Um, Novi ranked number one in, in the, the nation. nation. They just tore Grand Blank to shreds at West Bluefield. Oh, what was the score? Four nil. Oh boy. And I that mean, and that Grand Blank's one of the top teams, teams in the state. Yes, and that's no slouch of a team. No. And then the other side, you got Plymouth, who's came out of nowhere. Yeah. And they're taking on Troy. Troy, of course, winning their regional at home, beating Adams 4-0. Troy, here's a storyline here to tell you. You know, Troy has not played a state tournament game outside their boundaries, outside the city <laughs> limits of Troy. Well, what that's does a that he- say? That's a heck of a draw. That's a beautiful draw Abs- for Troy. Absolutely. That's a beautiful draw because you have your regional at home, your district at Troy Athens, <laughs> and now your state semifinals at Troy Athens. Wow. So There's something to be said about that, though. I mean, we've seen other OAA uh, schools, like Orion being one of them, host, willing to host these events, regionals and track. We've seen uh, districts as well being held here. We see basketball all the time, well, volleyball, right? But if you're Troy, you know, you don't even have to leave your city boundaries. Well, there you go. They can ride their bike to each uh, each uh, event and From sleep in the bed. From Long to John R. Road. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, to not, go to if John R. Road. Not too far. No, not too far. Now, when you look at the matchup, Plymouth's not a bad team. I mean, they knocked off Ann Arbor here on 3-1 to one in their regional finals. I believe that was at Dearborn. Um, now, Troy, you know, we know Troy has been in the Final Four before, you know, and you know, we know the city of Troy pipeline with yeah. soccer. Oh, boy. We know that. Loaded, yes. It is loaded, and they got a ton of talent on that team. Mm-hmm. So, when I look at Troy's chances, I think being in a place you're familiar with is going to help you in this one, whereas Plymouth, they have to travel down to Athens, you know, and Plymouth is, I think, fami- se- home, I think scenery has a lot to do with it. Troy's <laughs> been here, whereas Plymouth does not. Yeah. I mean, anytime you have to travel, you have to get your mindset right, right? But a lot of these kids at this stage, if they're at this level, they've been playing for so long, they're used to traveling and playing at different stadiums, different fields. They're all over the place. I mean, just the, the development of these players in a youth level, you're traveling all over the place. So I don't, I don't know if it, it – it, it, unless it's a partisan crowd, right? I mean, right. if, if it's loaded with – if the stands are filled with uh, Colt fans and it's a raucous crowd, then, yeah, I mean, it could, could rattle a little bit. But these kids at this level, they've traveled so far and wide since they've been eight years old, I don't think it really matters. So you don't think familiar scenery matters? It, it can, but I don't think it'll lead to that much. I think uh, coming in, I don't think it, it'll bother them. Maybe the field surface. Is it grass? Yeah, Is it artificial? Turf. It's field so, turf. I, at this point, these guys, these uh, athletes have played on all types of surfaces. Um, but it is a home. I mean, it, for the home team, I shouldn't say home team because it's not technically a home game, no. but it is for Troy. Obviously, they'll roll in with a lot of confidence. I mean, that'll give them an extra boost, but I don't think it's going to uh, tamp down uh, Plymouth at all. You don't think it's going to tamp down the Wildcats? Nah. So, if I had to give you a projection... We both think Novi is going to be in the state final. Yeah, I think Novi is going to take the We whole think thing. Novi is going to be in the state final. Yes. Who do you think Novi is going to take on? Troy or <laughs> Plymouth? If it is Plymouth, it's a KLA rematch. It's a KLA matchup. Could both teams are in the same conference. Uh, Whereas with how did, Troy, the re- how did the regular season pan out? Novi and was it one and Novi two? Novi has not lost a game all year. There's a reason why they're number one. In the <laughs> In the country. <laughs> and then you got Troy and Plymouth. Who do you got in that one? It's hard to pick against Troy. Um, but I'm going to go with Plymouth. You're going to go with Plymouth? Yeah. They're loaded over there with talent. I mean, that side too. I'm going to go Troy because I think being at home helps a lot. Being at home is going to be, I think, a difference maker. I think it's going to be close. I think it'll be close. It two to one? Me. Two to one? It wouldn't surprise me if it comes down to the penalties. Whoa! It wouldn't surprise me if it comes well, down to the penalties. that's about as close as you can get. You know, 
I think Troy will take this one, and I think they're going to be in the state final. I think Troy's going to head. I think the state final is at Michigan State this year. Really? I think so. Okay. So I think it's going to be Troy Novi over at Michigan State this upcoming weekend. Um, and I think it's going to be really, really interesting. That is an understatement. I would love to see what's on the West. Well, this is it, right? I mean, it's uh, mm-hmm. Novi and whoever's coming Grand out. Grand Rapids, of- Forest Hills. Um, Forest Hills is on the other side. Man, Forest Hills, if they take out if Novi. If they take out Novi, oh, what, my Wouldn't that God. be the, one of the largest upsets? That would be a, a monstrous long, long, long upset time? if they were to do it. Do I think they have? I don't think they have the horses to pull off the upset. What's Novi's record? Are they undefeated? They have undefeated? not lost. You know how hard that is? That is hard. And they're not playing in some rinky-dink league either. No. And you know they play top yeah, they out, play of top, out of conference competition. Yeah, conference competition, yeah. Wow. So, Novi, they're legit, man. Oh, absolutely. They're very legit. <laughs> if they're really the number one in the um, nation. Okay. Wow. wow. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm looking. Oh, and for more information, it, head over to the MHSAA.com site, you guys. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a lot of great articles popping up about the lead up to the state finals and these a lot of good stories. It's not just st- stats and data. Um, they have a story on Novi. It's up there and what's coming up. Um, and they're going to release districts probably by the end of the week, at uh, the end of the weekend. So oh, we will, for, for basketball, and yeah, volleyball, yeah. cross country, they've already got boys soccer districts up. Wow. So if if you guys want to have to get your uh, – your taste of uh, high school athletics and see what's going on currently. Uh, MHSAA.com has it going on. And, I will post um, a blog article of the basketball volleyball districts. Okay. They're going to be on my blog at Sammy Semicolon Termina Vlogspot.com. Also, I'll print out a um, write a little article on the on the boys soccer districts to be released um, coming up as well. Um, let's go from soccer. Let's talk softball. Yeah. Um, particularly this one team. <laughs> The Clarkston Wolves. Yeah. You know, this is a team that the last four games in the state tournament, it's been Waterford Kettering, Lake Orion, Groves, Adams. They have outscored those four teams 44 to nothing. That's crazy. That is insane. I didn't know that stat. I know they uh, took care of Lake Orion pretty easily. Yeah, we were on we were on air last it, week yeah. when it happened. When Correct. Clarkson just basically went nuts in the first inning, it was over. It was basically over. Wow! And Clarkson outscored Groves and Adams by a combined twenty to nothing. Shutouts, both shutouts. Wow! Do you think they've been uh, doubly focused after Lake Orion took them down? I think they've been focused more and more. But there's another team that took them down. Oh, beside Lake Orion. That's Heartland, the Heartland Eagles. Yeah, Heartland beat Clarkston one nothing. Gave them their second loss of the year. So and they're out. So now you look at state quarterfinal matchup. Who does Clarkston play? Yeah, Heartland. Here's why. Here's gosh, what, that's going to be a good game. Here's what: if you're in the mind of Clarkston, <laughs> this is yeah. what you're thinking. If you're Don Peters. If you are Hannah Cady, if you're Sierra Christian, if you're Olivia Warrington, this is what you're thinking. Heartland has owned us the last two meetings. The last two meetings we played. It has not been. You remember <laughs> this year's meeting where you lost one nothing, where your heavy yeah. hitters couldn't hit against the pitcher. Now, I know the pitcher is very good. But what stings you was last year. Same game. It was, you were up 2 nothing. Bottom of the seventh inning. You're three outs away from going to, you're three outs away from going to East Lansing. And then you give up a single. You give a nut, then you give a double. And then everything just goes into a tailspin and you're in a 2-2 game. And then you lose on a walk-off. Oh. You lose on a walk-off single. You lose 3-2. To the same Heartland team. You're saying, you're thinking, Heartland 
owns you because they do right now. <laughs> they own them right now. They own Clarkston. Now, I'm thinking, is, how am I going to get them back? How am I going to get them back? Because you know this is a much different game than what they played in the last four games. Yes. This is going to be a much different game. Yeah. Because. Was it too easy of a road? Was it too easy a road? I don't know. Because you had an honorable mention team you beat, and you beat the fifth-ranked team of State. Yeah. And then you knocked off Groves, and then you knocked off Adams. So and you can't say all those teams had off days. Yeah, you can't say that. No. I know you're very good. I get that. But there has to be a psychological thing that is affecting that team over there when they played this one team. Heartland had a hard time at home in the regional with South Lion East. They had a really hard time with them. They needed to escape South Lion East 7-6. to six. They were down late. Need a walk off to win against <laughs> South Lion East. South Lion East, we talk about I mean, that was a team that came out of nowhere. Yeah. They stunned South Lion. And then they beat what well, Farmington. But if you're Heartland, you should have confidence coming into that game with Clarks. Your motivation is if you're Heartland, you have your arch rival. Like you're going to be playing on the other side in Howell. Howell's been one of those teams mm-hmm. ranked in the state all year. Yeah. They got a pitcher who's going to Notre Dame. So. What would we say about having an ace pitcher? If you have a legit ace. Yeah. You can walk through Clarkson's got anybody. three of them. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but the question is for this team is can Clarkson get by Hartland? That's the question. If Clarkson could get by Heartland, then they're going to be in the Final Four, which I think they're going to be how. Um, and I and I'm saying that, and I'm saying that with a lot of guts right now. Yeah, considering they're considering they're they got to get yet. by, they're not there yet. <laughs> so you're picking them to, t- to take the W. I like Clarkson this one because of the motivation factor. Yeah, if there is not enough motivation to play Heartland. For those girls over there, then something's wrong. I'd say, too, that they should have it, – It's a. did they play Heartland last year until – They lost. They were up 2 nothing. But, I mean, did they play them besides playoffs? They played them early in the year, lost one nothing. Okay. So, this year – so, I'm talking, like, last year. So, this year, yes, they lost one nothing. But a year ago, did they meet up with that team prior to the playoff heartbreak? No. Different, right? So don't you think it's a little s- strategy here? Schedule the people that beat you. So you see them before you meet up in the playoffs. And they lost one nothing this season to them. Right. And right? Clarkson could not hit. And we know Clarkson can hit. Yes. One through nine. So if that's the case, they still know they're in it. one nothing is not a blowout. And, and sometimes but we go back to golf. Score is a score, black and white. There it is. Softball is a little different because, oh, yeah, you lost by one. That could be considered a blowout, or that could be considered a, not even a contest, right? Well, we know both pitchers are very good pitchers. Okay. We both know both teams have good pitchers. So it's going to take the hitters to make contact and hope for what's the fielding like. I mean, there's so many variables in this game that could go awry, but both teams are primed and ready to go. This game's at Novi. So, if Mary Scenery favors Hart. Yeah. I, I, don't, I don't know. It's like having them play, having played them earlier is always a good thing. We've talked about that. Mm-hmm. Play the ones that are tough. Play the tough non-conference. Play teams that you've lost to because the only way you can beat them is if you play them. Right. And it seems like that's the strategy going on in. Hey, we might, this is a good team. Let's play them. And they went down one nothing. Now you need to. Now you know what you're getting into, right? So there's no mystery rolling into this game coming up for the Wolves, right? There's no mystery. No. I mean, and if that team does not have enough motive, does not have, <laughs> they'll be motivated. Enough motivation. Then, I mean, like there's if there's even the slightest of doubt, 
could get Clarkson. Mm. Even the slightest of doubt. I mean, do I I think Clarkson will win this game because of that motivation. Low scoring, of course. It's gonna be low scoring. I expect it will be. But if Clarkson can blitzkrieg like they did in their four uh, for their last four opponents. I don't think that's gonna happen. I don't think yeah, well if they do, let's say the bats explode. If the bats explode for Clarkson and they go off. They're not going to show mercy on Hartland. No, they're not. <laughs> they better not. No, and I think that gives them momentum, a huge momentum boost going into the next round and further. Likely against Tau because yeah. depending on how it get by Plymouth Canton, which they should. Um, but yeah, I'm this telling is a, you. This is a good game coming up. This is, this is the game that's going to test Clarks. Uh, yes, they're a junior heavy team. I get that. But this is the team that denied you a chance at East Lansing last year. <laughs> yes. You were in East Lansing. They were in East Lansing their freshman year. And then they were denied that their sophomore year. The, for this junior class over there, this is the perfect opportunity for them to get Heartland back. Because if, if they don't get Heartland this year, I don't yep. know if they'll be able to get them. In the next following years. Yeah. I don't know. Plus, I mean, the team was built for this sort of run, right? Clarkson is built. They're loaded with talent. One through nine. Very good. Yes. They're number two in the state. It's, it's, it would be amazing if during this run that they never got to East Lansing ever, you know, besides their they, freshman year. Their freshman year, they were in East Lansing. I can't imagine them, you know, not, not getting back. I mean, they're built for this sort of thing. They're built for this. one. They're built for this run. Yes. I mean, they're built for this. This, boy, are there a lot of good games coming up or what? It is the final week of the season. It's fantastic. Of, this, is, this is fun. There's no baseball, OA baseball teams to talk about. Of course, baseball was knocked out. Um, Oxford baseball is blowing up by Birmingham Brother Rice. Troy lost to Romeo in the um, regionals rounds. Yeah, Romeo's um, a tough team. But Romeo was knocked out by Birmingham Brother Rice in extra innings. Ah, extra so, innings. That's what happens. It's postseason, dude. Yes, it is. All right, let's take a break here, and then we'll talk some basketball here on OA Now. This is The Local Voice, where you can listen to your favorite classic rock songs, as well as podcasts created by ONTV and its volunteers. If you're looking for a high school sports update show, we have OAA Now. If you want to hear about some great movies, we have Movies for Dumb Guys. You can also create your own podcast by taking a course with us. For more information, call 248-393-1060. This is Lake Orion's own The Local Voice. Call ON TV and get on air 248-393-1060. Let your voice be heard. Internet radio for all. Call ON TV and get on air. Welcome back to OA Now here. I'm Sam Caramina here with Ian Lockett. Hey. Um, a lot of talk about in the in boys basketball here, and we got a coaching move in girls basketball as well. Um, a lot of new coaches named this week. Um, let's go with the let's go with the coaches. Um, the first one here was um Avondale has a new boys basketball coach. Um, and um Pat Clancy. Clancy was named the new head coach at Avondale. Um, on um. Last, um, on Wednesday, of course, um, I emailed at Avenue Athletic Director Keith Gus. He confirmed me the news that Clancy is the head coach over there at Avondale. Um, and Clancy, he played his high school basketball at UD Jesuit, played his college ball at Kalamazoo College, and he was, where he was a MIAA all-second team as a junior in the 2006-2007 season. Clancy was an assistant at Warren Cousineau and taught at Waterford Our Lady of the Lakes, so... When you look at it, when you look at this hire, I'm a little skeptical about this hire because yes, he oh. brings a ton of basketball knowledge, but Warren Cousineau was not good at basketball. We're not good. So, <laughs> and now, and now, um, I haven't I'm, followed Cousineau in a while. <laughs> I mean, I'm curious to see how this hire would go, um, because Avondale's strength is their guards. But yeah. they really don't have a lot of bigs to develop when you look at that program. Um, but Clancy brings um, 
a ton of veteran experience. Um, he is very, very animate on Twitter. He's got a good. I mean, he's he very. Throws animate a lot on of Twitter. stuff out there. Oh, he's very prideful with his with Waterford Our Lady Lakes. Um, and Warren Cousin when he was an assistant there. Okay. I expect him to do the same thing with at Avondale. So with Avondale, they got a good basketball knowledge guy. Yeah. I'm curious to see how he's going to do leading a program. You know, and a lot of these teams, I'm very curious. You know, Adams with Jared Thomas over there. Yeah. Um, and um, this hire here with Jared Thomas. I mean, this hire here with the Pat Clancy. I'm curious to see what he brings to the fold over there at Avondale. Um, especially with the athletes Avondale has, especially in the guards. They're going to be in the blue division this year. When you look at um, when you look at the teams in there, you got Rochester, Berkeley. Troy Athens, Seaholm, and um, Royal Oak that are in there. I mean, that's going to be an interesting division when you when you look at when you look at those teams. Um, and Pontiac, I mean, and Pontiac, they're still looking for a new coach after yeah. um, Joe Schroeder left for Lake Orion. Yeah, that's. I'm surprised that's still out there. Um, like we said, you you better start shoring up your coaching positions now because. Summer, yeah, summer league starting, starting up soon. They're starting up. I, they, they've been starting. It started yesterday. Yeah, yeah. That's that's a tough, tough goal of it. Yeah, but with Clancy at Avondale, it's gonna be very interesting. He takes over Tim Morton, who's been there. Um, he's gonna. I think he's gonna change it up. But like I said, you know, I'm curious to see how his style is gonna work in um in the OA. I'm curious to see how that happens. Um, we got more breaking news. Another new head coach named in girls basketball now. Um, Rochester's got their new girls basketball coach. Um, Bill Thurston takes over the team, replaces Jeff Haney, who led into a share of the blue title last season. Um, Thurston was the junior varsity coach at Rochester. Very familiar with the girls in the program. Um, of course, um, we talk about the problems with Rochester. Um, girls basketball, stability. This is their fourth coach in four years. Yeah, that's tough. And it's brutal. You know, when you look at, um, I mean, Rochester, they are going to be one of the favorites this year in the blue division. Um, you know, of course, with um, the likes of Berkeley, Berkeley's going to be very good. Um, Seaholm's going to be a good team to watch for um, in that blue division. Farmington could be a wild card team. Um, so for the girls over at Rochester, it's somebody that they know within the program. I want to get your thoughts on having somebody familiar with the program there and how it's going to help them going forward. Well, it always helps, right? I mean, they know what they're getting into. It's not a mystery. Um, you know, maybe they've crossed paths with some of the players in the past, so there's a already pre-built relationship established, you know, going in, which always helps. It always helps. You know, always, but understanding that the turnover and everything that's happening, you know, it's, I mean, what do you do? It's... It, <laughs> It, it's. I'm just hoping they get some stability. I mean, we talked about it from some other teams like Pontiac and some other coaches around. It's like stability is key, you know. And anytime you lose a coach, I mean, we, you know, personally, my daughter lost her track coach uh, mm -hmm. this year. He, he, stepped down. he stepped down. That was a big. That was a complete shock, and it affects these kids. I mean, um, you know, it it does. You you, you develop a relationship with somebody that you're tr you're you're meant to trust and guide you through these uh, experiences on the field or the court or whatever it is. And to lose them, again, four in four years is just, that is crazy. It's tough. It's so difficult. So do you trust the new guy coming in, especially the underclassmen? Of, you know, let's say you're a junior. Hey, man, I'm on my third coach. Going into my senior year, this is my fourth coach? You know? Wh it's tough. How, how do you run through the wall for this guy or girl, you know, as your leader, if you don't think they're going to be around. Well, I think with so Thurston hard. there, I think with Thurston there, he is a teacher in the school district. Yes. So that, so that, that does help a lot. Correct. And I think, I think with Thurston there, um, you know, you got two established programs in the city of Rochester. Yeah. When you look at Stony Creek, of course, with Kellen James and Adams with Shea Lewis. Um, I mean, it's going to be a tough sell for Thurston, you know, to get that team rolling. I mean, winning the blue last year, sharing the blue title, is the first step. It's just yeah. you got to 
win your non-conference. Yep. And I think that's going to be a tough task for Thurston, you know. I just say get established, get settled, get you, something going, you, you start get, building something. Yeah, you got to do that. You got to do that. And I think I think with him there, I think it's going to say a lot, you know, when you look at it. Um, it's going to be interesting. Yeah. It's going to be very interesting. I just hope it sticks. I hope it does. You know? I really hope it does, too. I really, I really hope it does. Um, and then, of course... I want to go to another. I want to go to an interesting article here. Um, okay, it doesn't involve the OA. Um, Scott Bernstein wrote a article about a transfer coming in. Um, from where and to where? His his name is Isaiah Jackson. He went. He was at Spire Academy last year. Competed with teammates to. Lamelo Ball oh. and Maurice and Maurice Rocket Watts. Yes, and ESPN ranks him the 13th overall prospect in America for the incoming senior class, Re- regardless of position. Regardless of position. Wow. Many recruiting experts pegged them as the best defensive player for this entire class. Wow. And and he's coming where he enrolled at Waterford Mott. At Waterford Mott. And this guy is a six nine forward. I mean, and now he's going to be playing for the Corsairs now, pending if they get by the transfer rule. Yeah. Um, and his school is located in Ohio, correct? Yes. Yes. So the academy is outside the state. Right. So it's very interesting because Jackson does have connections. Really? To my, yep. His sister's been at my older brother went there. Um, but that's a natural connection. Right. It's not some right. coach or player. No, no AU. family. Yeah. Family. So when I look at this hire, this, hire this move, this move yeah. you know, a lot of people view Jackson's move back in the state as a possible future Mr. Basketball candidate, first ever in Waterford. But here's if he's the question. A, if he's ever, thing is advertised... If he's there could as be. advertised, could he lead him to a state title? Ooh. I don't know. Wow. They still, if the districts are hold the same, and if they're with Orchard Lake St. Mary's, yeah. I think they're going to have a huge problem with Orchard Lake St. Mary's. One player does not make a team. You know no. that. Plus, no. somebody coming in like that, unless they have, it, it's a, it's, a lot of it is. There's a, a difference between uh, Spire Academy yes, and Waterford Mott. Exactly. Like night and day. But it's a huge move for Coach Dave McGowan and his team. Yeah. I've also heard a lot of other rumblings going around that program as well. At Mott? At Mott. Yeah. But I'm not going to go into it. I'm going to keep it off camera. Okay. <laughs> but. There's a little carrot that you can't see. There's a little carrot I and can't, you can't see. And you can't taste. I can't taste. Um. So, how would the transfer rules impact him? I mean, he already has family in the district. Would he have to sit out? Well, it's it's very interesting because I know a couple other players that took the same exact route um, that um, Jackson went. Um, I know it's um, just interesting. I mean, we know the rules, man. We've been through it how many times, and uh, mm-hmm. we we were debating this. For months, and then right. the end, uh, MHSA right. came out with these new rules, right. which it, haven't technically taken hold yet. yet. So, is this like the last ditch you I can think, transfer before the rules? Well, hit, this is or? very interesting because you, Detroit University, Detroit Jesuit had two players, Jillian Dozier and Jalen Thomas. They were both had short stints out of state, but they retained their eligibility right away. Yes. Because they I, come back home to their right district. to their district, they're not I, going to a competing one no. or across town. Yeah, I think Jackson. I think he gets to play. He plays right away. Yeah. I think Jackson will play right away. I go. Why would he come back if he was at risk of not? Mm-hmm. I mean, look at Kithier. Yeah. He lost a whole year. Kithier lost a whole year because there were a lot of, <laughs> and I want to talk about that in a couple minutes because I think there's something there's linked an, to that, and not not with this not with Jackson's case. But there's a possible rumor going around the emerging case, you know, yeah. that might have a same link rule. 
with Kid Year. Yeah. But here's the thing with Jackson. I think he's going to play right away. I think that, you know, he's officially in the district. He is taking classes at Water Vermont. Um, now, not a lot more longer, you know what I mean? Because we're all out. Yeah, school's uh, school's yeah, going to be yeah. out real shortly. But I think, you know, that for Dave McGowan and his team, this is a huge coup to get. Absolutely. Huge coup. Because now you have a chance to defend your Lakes Valley Conference Championship, which I think Water Vermont obviously now becomes the favorite yeah. for that, um, for the Lakes Valley. Um, even though Lakeland might have a say about it. But now you put, and this could be something worth district related. Because if the districts hold the same as they were last year, Water Vermont would be in a district with West Bloomfield, Bloomfield Hills, and Orchard Lake St. Mary's. Um, and then, or unless you put Water Vermont with Clarkston, Oxford, Lake Orion. Yeah, yeah. That would be brutal for that would be brutal. Yeah. But now with Jackson involved, it's gonna say, you know, we'll see what happens. I think they're in play. They're now in play. Waterford Mott is now in play for maybe more than contention for the Lakes Valley. They could be a, a sleeper in the state. Yeah. They could well, be. Well, well the one thing we know about basketball. You have five guys, right? Right. Five guys. One oh. doesn't beat five. Correct. But one can enhance four. Correct. Especially if you're off the charts. If he's a McDonald's, if, if he's you're a that good, all American, yeah. Well, you got a double team coming, right? So that frees up some shoot, right? Obviously. It, it can change it can change the whole outlook of that team. I agree. Basketball is like that one it's just like we've seen in the college ranks, you see in the all levels of basketball. You get you can bring in one guy or girl, right? And it could change the whole complexion of that team. It does sometimes for the positive, sometimes for the, for negative. the negative. It all depends on how they 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 match together. Now, if he's a local guy, like it sounds like he is, he's got family there, his sister's playing. It's a he's a known commodity. Maybe these well, guys he know each one other. One year at Rochester Hills, Luther Northwest before. Okay, um, and then um, I wonder if he went through the Waterford school system up to the point where he started playing big time basketball. I think he did. Um, so, you know, you might come, like we said, a lot of these guys know each other. Well, he they played at one year at Rochester, Luther Northwest, and then he went to Detroit Old Redford as a sophomore before going to Spire. Jeez, bouncing around a lot. He's been bouncing around a lot. Um, so I'm curious to see where this holds up. Yeah. Well, hey, he's a junior coming in, right? So he's going to be a senior. To be a senior. Yeah, he's got to play. There's, I would be shocked if he made that decision to say, yeah, I'm coming with it, the risk of not being able to play. Well, remember, it's the same thing that happened with Kid Year. But that, again, that was different. Completely different. Completely different. I think Jackson will play. I really do. So, um, so what's your tie? Like, you, you, had, you got me on my edge of my seat over here about the other transfer. The emerging boys. Yeah, what's going on? Well, I was talking to Scott Bernstein. Um, and if you go on... If you go on Twitter, um, you go on Twitter, um, Jeff Jason, of course, former coach at Water Vermont, posts his, pick, posts his like, accomplishments about um, his top, about um, his top, his team, his team on his AAU team. AAU team, okay. So, so I noticed a tweet on June 3rd about Ethan Emerging. Of course, Ethan Emerging of Troy High. Troy High. And... He played at Adams, as we know. So you know he must have transferred to Adams. Yeah, that was the... As, transferred to Troy from Adams. Correct. That was the discussion we had a couple weeks ago. And Jake and Mersey. Yes. Of course, both, both sets of brothers. Now, when I look at the possible link to the Kithier saga, you know, we know how that yeah. ended up being. I think that there could be some... Could there be some same similarities, considering that there's a relationship between the Emersians and Brody Parker? They're on the same AAU team. 
I've Cause, seen because that was that was the hang up before, right? It's that was the hang up. The new thing for the MHSAA's transfer rules were links, right? Right. How are these players linked together? Right. Correct. Either Correct. via coach or mm-hmm. uh, teammates. Right. That even sort of thing. even if it's residents, you know what I mean. I know the emerging family moved into Troy. Mm-hmm. You know, but here there has there's a there's clearly a link between those two guys. Yeah. So uh, we're anticipating they'd have to sit out. We're we're anticipating both of them have to sit out. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that would be so they wouldn't be able to touch the court until the new year. Correct? That's what the rule states. You know, I know there's some exceptions to the rule, but but um, but that's what the rule states. You gotta yeah. if you transfer in, you gotta sit out of here. So what were the, the arguments we always heard? Um, I I changed because they had a program. They didn't have it in my high school. Right. Um, Resident. Residents. Uh, I just wanted to play for a mm-hmm. better coach or something like that. Right. I mean, we've heard them before. We've heard them before. So far, we haven't heard why. Yeah, so far, we haven't heard why. But having the whole family move to Troy, it could be a, you know, a job situation. It could just be people well, move all I the th- time. I think, I, think there's, I think there's more to this story than, <laughs> than it's. Covered. Now, are these these players uh, high profile? Are they heavily recruited? Ethan Emerzian is very high profile, especially in the OA. You know, when he was at Adams, you know, he was a guy who was an all all state three point shooter as a freshman. Um, now you're putting him together with Brody Parker. You know, yeah. I know that that friendship. I know that connection really well, and the fact that those two te- those two have played together in AU ball. Those two have um, been really close. Yeah. And now they're putting them on the same high school team. You but know? if they follow the rules, I mean, the whole thing with Kithier was that they were battling that, mm-hmm. right? They were fighting that transfer rule. And people were telling them bad info and said, hey, yeah, you're in, you're cool, you can play, blah, 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 you know? I mean, they had to have said, yes, you can get in. Well, Macomb you... Dakota filed the um, protest, the MHA. Correct. But now, you know what I mean? With uh, got... Adams file a protest? I would mean... Adams do it? I, I don't know if they would do it. I really don't know if Adams would do it. But considering that Adams and Troy are in the same division, <laughs> yeah. are in the same division now. Yeah. You know, so that, I mean. And the fact that Adams has been through a turbulent offseason the yes. way they've been, of course, the departure of the Emersians and now. The departure, like the departure of Gunnar Walters, co- the and coaches. then Brad Crichton left. Yeah, you know coaches, what I mean? Yeah. And then now, yeah, I mean they hired Jared Thomas to take over the team. You know, and then they had Nate Ebola there for yeah. about a week, week and then and before yeah. Thomas took yeah. over. I mean, like it's been crazy. Yeah, it's re- it's revolving chairs over there. It's been crazy with that team. So if if I'm if I'm um if I'm the Emersians, you know what I mean? If I'm Adams, I don't know what you do here. I mean, we always did we. I mean, looking back at the the protest filed on Kithier, right? Was it seen as petty? Because we were adding it up, going, how many times have the teams or the uh, the school losing the player file the complaint? Not a lot. It hasn't happened that often. It hasn't happened that often. But no. this one was, I mean, they they didn't hesitate. I mean, they did it right away. Yeah, Macomb and, Dakota did yeah, that right and away. Yeah, said, hey and, man, this is you know. And then when you look at the immersion concept you know you have Brody Parker when you look at what happened with Kit here it's the connection to Foster Lawyer yeah you know so this has the potential to be very I, similar I, what I happened see, I don't know yeah and I see it as you know obviously we have to wait mm-hmm, that's um, obvious. but you know and we're not suggesting that there's anything nefarious going on it's just one of these things where kids are bumping around and wh- how are the rules going to play out Right? Because that's the, at least on my end, it's like, I want to see how the rules play out. Are, are they following the rules? Is everything cool? Are they going to sit out? You know, because the whole... I mean, the new the new rules came into play, you know what I mean? In 2019, in 2019 right? 2019. So this uh, fall is when they will be implemented. This fall is when they'll be implemented. Yeah. So... So... We don't know. <laughs> I mean, and people even said there's some loopholes in these things, or there's questions about the rules, and I mean... Any new rule that is passed, sometimes you sit around and go, okay, sounds good. And then, then when it's impl- implemented and people are start living that rule, you go, ooh, wait a minute. We didn't, there's some unintended 
consequences that could happen. But if the Emersians were to play right away, yeah, then this is a good coup for Troy and Coach Gary Heck Frillick. yeah. Because now you're going to have a three-point shooter, who a three-point shooter at point guard, a three-point shoot, shooting guard, <laughs> and then you have a three-pointer shooter at small forward. Yeah. So basically you got three three-point shooters there, but it still doesn't cover Troy's biggest problem, which is going to be in the interior. Yes. Because, and I think, I think that's going to be Troy's downfall is their interior. I know they got a big, they got a good big down there, but until they figure, I mean, until they figure out their interior situation, I don't know if Troy can can be able to handle a team like Farmington. You know, <laughs> Farmington's got a shoot them out of the gym. That's what Troy's intention is going to be. It's going to shoot people out of the gym. You know, that style of play can work. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's worked against several teams before. I mean, like when you shoot lights out in a gym. You but you can I mean? also go cold. We've but seen that too. But you can also go cold. I mean, that's that's a dangerous part of playing that style of game is if you, you – there's teams that are very streaky. Yeah. And Troy's one of those teams that defined to me as a streaky team. Um. I think when you look at it at the end of the day here, um, there is... That, Do you think they're going to play? The emergence? Yeah. I had a nice conversation with Anthony about this the other day. Yeah. He doesn't think they will. I don't think they'll play. Not... I mean, they'll play, but not right away. I think it's going to take... I think... Yeah, I... I, I think it's going to take until 2020. Yeah, give me a... Give me a couple um <laughs> give me a couple months and I'll okay. get back to you on that. <laughs> Gonna let it let it stew for a little I'll bit. I'll let it stew for All a little right. bit, you know get what I mean? Get a simmer going. But <laughs> but I'm curious to see what happens with that situation over at Troy. Yeah. I'm very curious. Um because now um I know that um there's been a lot of hints on Twitter about the emergence. You know, if you read Jeff Jason's Twitter account, he says of Troy Ethan emerging of Troy High. You yeah. know what I mean? So that yeah. tells you yeah, there's in. a story there. So that is, that is just really interesting. Just a lot of rumblings well, going around the boys' the, basketball. Well, the, the, the one thing is that we've been talking about this for so long, we're going to actually see the new rules in action right I'm away. I'm going to be curious right to see away. how they do right away. Correct. And we're going to see how, how it goes. And um, Not that, that we have the MHSA rule book in front of us, but uh, that was a huge one. And with the complaints from so many people far and wide across the state saying, hey, we got to change these rules. This is getting out of hand. Well, let's see what happens. We'll see what happens with these new rules in play. I hope they do. I hope they change the new I – ho I hope they do. All right, final thoughts of the week here. Mention everybody congratulations on yeah, graduating absolutely. senior class 2018-2019. Be safe out there, everybody. Be safe out there, everybody. Wish everybody the best of luck, especially Clarkston and Troy. Mm -hmm. Um this week on their quest to state championships. Um, we'll see what happens going forward there. All right, now, Sam to me. I'm going to sign off here. Take care, buddy. See you all next week. See you later, buddy. See you, Sam. Oh, hey, now, it's produced by Sam Ter Teramina and the views on the shore. His and his alone. If you like to make your own podcast, give Owen TV a call here at 248 Cheer on those OAE teams. It's the end of the spring season. Can you believe it? We'll see you next week on OA Now. See ya.